When it comes to backing up your computer, there are about a billion different ways to do it. If you're a novice user, a lot of these seem complicated, but they're really not. So I'm gonna show you a few of my favorites. Now, the first thing you need to know when it comes to backing up your computer is what type of backup you plan on doing. There are two primary ways to do it. The first one is to do what's called a complete system backup, which is basically creating a snapshot image of your existing drive so you can easily restore it 100% exactly the way it was. The other method is simply backing up your files, your documents, your pictures, and so on. And that's an entirely different way to back up. So the first thing I want to focus on is doing a complete system backup, and then we'll get to the file backup later. Now, if you're more of an advanced user and you're not scared to dabble a little bit, the ideal solution would be to do what's called a system backup. Now, generally what that's going to entail is a device similar to this, this is basically just an external drive reader. And what you would basically do is take a spare hard drive and physically connect it into this device. This device connects to your computer. And then you could use a program like Clonezilla, for example, which is 100% free, and then actually make a duplicate of your existing drive onto this drive. And then if for some reason your current hard drive goes bad, you can literally take this out, swap them out, and you're back up and running in literally 15, 20 seconds. That is the ideal solution, but that's a little advanced for a lot of people. Plus, you have to add the cost of a secondary drive if you don't have one, plus the cost of a drive reader. You can usually get these anywhere from 25 to 30 bucks on up. If you notice here behind me, I have a four drive reader, because I usually work on multiple computers at once. But your average person could get away with one of these. So you're looking at maybe $30, $35 plus another $30 or $40 to always have a good solid backup that you, no matter what your skill level, if you can open your computer and plug this in, that's all you need. So no matter what your skill level, even if you're a novice, probably about $60 in parts and a free piece of software that you can download in just a few minutes and you can have an exact replica of your hard drive. Sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. Now I'll have links in the description below if you want to just click on it and have stuff sent directly to your house. And once you have everything that you need, you can just simply go to clonezilla.org. It's a free program. And once you get to this page, you just wanna click on download over here to the left. I would recommend choosing this version here, which is the most stable. And then once you click download, it'll go ahead and start the download. Now, while that's downloading, you want to click on this link right here. This will explain, depending on whether you want to do it on CD or DVD or put it on a USB flash drive, it has instructions here, very detailed, that will explain what you need to do and how you need to do it. I won't get into exactly how to use it. It's all right here on the web page, but it's at clonezilla.org. Now there is another method that does cost a few dollars. It is a very point and click user friendly method called AOMI Partition Assistant. I made a video about it. I'll put the card up above and you can check it out. Now, if you don't particularly want to use the Clonezilla software, there is a utility built into Windows that lets you basically do the same thing. Let me show you how to do that. From the Windows 11 search bar, you want to type control panel and hit enter. It's gonna bring up this old style control panel here. You wanna to go to system and security, and then under backup and restore Windows 7, click on backup and restore Windows 7. And then over here to the left, click on create a system image. You're gonna to wanna to have a external storage drive either plugged in like the adapter that I showed you or one that's already in your computer that doesn't have any files on it. Um, and then you can just choose right here which drive you want to put that image on. Or if you want to put it on multiple DVDs, you can do that too, uh, or even store it on your network. So in this case, if we wanted to put it on a hard disk, select the drive, in this case, the spare drive that you wanna put the image on, and you would click next. And then at this point, you would say, what drives do you wanna include on the backup? And you would select this drive here. Now. Right now it's giving me this error because I don't have a drive big enough for the 700 gigabytes that it would require to create this image. But if I did, I'd be able to check that C drive right there and then click next and continue. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna take a snapshot of your drive and it's going to save it. I mean, of course you can, you can also schedule it so you could make a weekly or monthly backup. Now, if you're using Windows 10, 
you should have similar options here. Just click on control panel, then go to system and security, and then backup and restore. You still have the same options here. So it works the same way for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. Now the caveat is even if you have a drive that's big enough to store all those files, don't do a daily backup. The reason for that is because if you have a good backup on Monday and a good backup on Tuesday and then Wednesday night you get hit with a ransomware virus that's now encrypted all your files and you do a normal backup, now you've just overwritten Tuesday's good backup with encrypted files on Wednesday. Not a good idea. So I would at least schedule it out to be a weekly backup or a monthly backup just to buy you some time if you do have that problem. Now you know you at least have a good copy of your files. So what that's going to do is it's going to literally look at your computer and make an exact duplicate of your system onto this new or spare hard drive. And again, if your computer ever crashes, you can just plug this in and replace the other drive and you've lost nothing except the files that you've put on it since you created that image. To me, this is one of the downsides of using this method simply because if you created an image a year ago and you've put a bunch of files on your computer, whether it's documents or spreadsheets or images or whatever, that image that you create is only going to have what was on that drive a year ago. So everything that you had since then, you don't have access to. So unless you're going to be doing regular backups like this, creating, say, weekly cloned images, which a lot of tech people do, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, uh, but if you're not going to do that regularly, this is probably not the best solution for you. But even this, as simple as it is for tech people, may still be a little complicated for you. And maybe all you want is really just to find a way to save your files without necessarily having to create a disk image or buy extra hardware or any of that stuff. So I'm going to show you a few ways that you can back up your stuff for free and maybe that'll be a little bit easier for you. Most people just want to have their files backed up and can reinstall Windows and then copy their files over. So I'm going to show you different methods to do that and then we'll go from there. I'm trying to make this video as simple as possible for the most novice of users. Setting up a Microsoft account on your computer, even though it's not my personal recommendation, is the easiest way to get your files backed up. As long as you don't go over that five gigabyte limit, you should be okay and you'll always have access to your files even if your computer dies. Uh, if you go over five gigabytes, now you are looking at spending a little extra money and it's usually only a dollar or two a month to buy some extra storage space. And if convenience is more important to you, that might be an option. But there's a couple other programs that I like that I wanna show you. Now one of the programs that is my absolute favorite is called Carbonite. And basically, this works the same way that any backup solution works, but it backs everything up to the cloud. Nobody ever actually sees your data. It goes from your computer to a server, to another server, and to another server. It's all military grade encryption, and it is absolutely 100% safe. Every time you change a file, go straight up to Carbonite server. If you delete a file, boom, deletes off the Carbonite server. The thing that I love probably the most about it is that if your computer dies, it gets stolen, lost in a fire, whatever, you go buy another computer, you log into Carbonite, you click restore, and boom, all your stuff up to date gets downloaded instantly. You haven't lost a single thing. To me, that is absolutely worth its weight in gold. Very easy to install. If you want to check out Carbonite, I think they gave you like a 14-day trial. You can click the link down below. It's an affiliate link, so if you do purchase it, I do make a few cents, but it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, there are free alternatives, and I'm going to show you one right now. Now, this program right here is called F Backup. Unlike Carbonite that backs up to the cloud, you don't have to buy any extra hardware. But if you have an extra storage drive laying around or an extra flash drive, this might be the solution for you. So what you want to do is just go to fbackup.com and then on this page click on the orange download F Backup free option and then click on the orange button again and then that will take you to a download page here start the download and then once the download is finished just go ahead and click on it to run it so go ahead and just click install now and then just go ahead and click launch and visit site it will open up the F Backup website you can close that and now it's going to run the software 
again, the most important difference between this and carbonite, for example, is the fact that you have to have a storage drive of some type. So if you have a portable drive or you have a flash drive, you can use this. If not, carbonite might be a simpler solution. I'll walk you through this real quick. The getting starting window pops up. You click create new backup job and then create new job again. It's got a very user friendly interface. It says, where do you want to save your backup? In this case, if you had an external drive or a removable flash drive, you would choose one of these options. Okay, so I've got a portable drive plugged in. I'm going to select drive L, which is my portable drive. And then I'm just going to call it backup. Click next. Now the next screen that comes up, what do you want to back up? And in this case, I just want to quickly select my pictures, my documents, my Firefox profiles, my Microsoft Edge favorites, Internet Explorer, so on and so forth. These are the more basic applications. But if you wanted to take it a step further and back up everything in your user profile, you could just click on the C drive, go to users, go to your profile name, and then just select the individual folders that matter to you. Most of the time selecting these default documents and pictures, that's where most people put everything anyway. But just to be sure, you could always do that. You click on next and then you can uncheck backup empty folders and then leave these settings alone. Click next and then just tell it to make a full backup whether you want to encrypt it or not. Click next. Here's where you want to schedule that backup. The important thing to know here is that if you are going to do this with a schedule backup, you need to make sure that that flash drive stays plugged in or the portable hard drive because it won't be able to back it up if the drive is not in there. So say I want to do this weekly and you can pick a date and time, whatever works for you. Click next, give it a name, call it weekly backup or whatever you want to name it and click save. And then you have the choice to save and run right now or just save it. And now, as you can see, it's got a full scheduled backup ready to go. It will now prompt you for a backup for all pro version of this, which honestly I've never used and nobody I know uses it. So I just ignore that. All you have to do is leave that drive in the system and it will back up all those folders. Anytime you want to edit the backup, you can just open the program, go to the backup that you created and you can create multiple ones too. You don't have to have just one. You can have multiple backups. If you like, you can right click and go to properties that will pull up the properties of this backup job. If you need to change the destination, you can back up to the cloud. I don't hundred percent sure that that's free. I think it is. I think the Google drive and Dropbox are free options there. If you don't want to use a portable drive, um, or if you suddenly get an external drive and you want to use that, you can just change that and make all the necessary changes that way. If you want to go in and add a new folder, say for example, you created a new folder, uh, on your C drive, you could click here, browse to it and include that just like that. So it gives you all the different options. If you want to go back and change the encryption, if you want to go back and change the scheduled date, you can make all those changes you need to right here. It's pretty cool. Now the pro version does give you the option to send you an email, uh, when the, uh, backup is completed, which is kind of neat. If you're away from home and you want the reassurance that the backup did run, you could use that. Uh, most people probably won't use that, but anyway, it's an option. And again, this is called F backup. It's totally free. Uh, I've used it on many clients and they love it. If you want absolute simplicity, Carbonite is really what I would recommend. And again, I don't recommend paid programs very often, but you're talking around $5 a month to literally just set it and forget it. It doesn't matter what you put on your computer, what you delete on your computer, it uploads it in real time and nobody's ever going to see anything on your computer. Uh, there are some limitations. I think it's limited to your primary hard drive, uh, versus external hard drives. So anything on your C drive, like your user folders and stuff, it will back up. But if you had a portable drive, I think you have to pay extra for that, but I'll put a link down in the description below, check it out, download the trial, see what you think. I actually have used it. I was referred to it by a client uh, many, many years ago, and I recommend it all the time. So it's, if you are willing to put a little bit of effort in with the portable drive, F backup is free. If you want to just pay five bucks a month or so to just have it work automatically. And the other thing I meant to mention about carbonite is if you 
have internet access somewhere else in the world. Say you're sitting in a cafe in Italy and you need a file off your computer. You can go to the Carbonite website, look at your latest backup and actually open any of the files that have been uploaded to it. So you can see your files individually instead of one big image file. So that's a real benefit. Like if you need a document or something uh, that you forgot to put on a flash drive or something like that. So that's a really cool benefit. And if you're a business, that's a few dollars a month that is going to guarantee all your data. It's absolutely, in my opinion, well worth it. But anyway, check out the link below and see what you think. Now there's one other program that a lot of people talk about and it's called Macrium. And I want to touch on that real quick. Now I get a lot of users commenting anytime I talk about backing up or creating recovery disks that all talk about Macrium. And Macrium is great and it used to be free, but it's not anymore. And you know, if none of these methods work for you or they're a little too complicated for you, you can always use the tried and true, manually copy your files right to a flash drive. Now, if you just want to copy data from one computer to the other, say you're upgrading, just get yourself a flash drive and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what you're gonna do, just go ahead and plug in your flash drive. You should see it pop up on your screen like this. In this case, this is drive letter L and it is a 64 gigabyte flash drive. Now, the other question is, how much space do you need? Here's how to easily figure that out. Under this PC or my computer, depending on which version you have, you want to go to your C drive, go to the users folder, click on your specific user folder, and inside this folder is all your personal user profile information. Hold down the control key, click on desktop, documents, downloads, favorites, music, pictures, and videos, and then let go of the control key. Now, while you have these items selected, and you can select any of the other ones, but these are the primary user folders. While you have these selected, just right click your mouse, go to properties, and it will show you how much total space is inside those folders. Now, in this case, I have 348 gigabytes. That's way too much for a flash drive. You can use an external drive, that's fine. Um, most people don't have this much user data, but if you do, just be aware that this is the minimum amount of size that you need to back up your data. So if you have a portable drive, you know, a 512 gig drive or one terabyte drive, that's more than enough. Now that we know how much space we have, that will help you determine what size drive you need. So once you have that information, you can just click cancel. And while these are still highlighted, you can right click and copy them. Say this is your portable hard drive or flash drive. You just simply select the drive, right click in this empty window and choose paste and it will copy those folders over to that flash drive for you. Then you can just simply turn around, plug that drive into the new computer or the upgraded computer, whichever it is, reverse the process, paste those back into the user folder on your new computer, just right click and paste, and then they will overwrite the new folders which have nothing in them with the data that you've copied over to the flash drive. I just wanted to cover some of those today so you had a more comfortable feeling with backing up. Now, if you have a better backup solution, make sure you leave it in the comments below. Maybe we'll make another video about it. We'll check it out and see. What I'm really concerned with is it easy to use for the average user. So if you have something to add, make sure you leave a comment. So hopefully that was easy to follow. I tried to make it very simple for the novice user, but if you have questions, make sure you let me know and we'll address them. Now, hopefully your system is working properly and you can get access to your files to back them up. But if for some reason you have an issue getting in your computer and you need to be able to get to your files, you might want to check out this video right here. I show you how to download a really cool utility that's going to give you access to that file system and give you the opportunity to back up your files. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.